Hi everyone, Colin Shadwell back for another pottery video. This time I'm making a really, really tall pierced vase. So I'm kind of, like I said in my last couple videos, I'm kind of going back to my, my classics, what I'm good at here. So I'm pretty good at making stuff and then cutting holes in it. So uh, here I've got a huge amount of clay. My goal here was to actually try to make a two foot vase for a, a protective perspective client, but it's hard. Getting up to two feet is pretty difficult uh, from one piece of clay. So um, I get her up around 18, 19 inches or so, but still off by quite a bit. But anyway, still a nice looking base. So I have quite a bit of clay on here. Now I had a, a person in one of my uh, YouTube comments asked me to show you this palm pull that I'm going to have to do here. So basically I kind of get the clay centered up, kind of leaning up towards the middle, kind of like a volcano. So I'm slowing this down here so you can kind of see what it looks like in real life about the speed the clay is going. And then I'm just kind of creating a little indentation with both hands here and then putting the bottom part of my palm inside that little indentation and then just kind of cupping the inside of my hand on the uh, on the inside part and just really slow you can see the speed that I do these pulls it's really nice and slow and I'm always visualizing that I'm pulling up the hill I don't want to flare this guy out I want to keep this guy somewhat uh, tapered inward so I'm always just kind of pulling up towards the middle until I get just a nice other tall volcano this is still really thick all the way through and I'm really careful not to let it get too thin in certain parts. You don't want it to get super thin in one area. So I'm just going nice and slow and just doing a nice gentle pull up into the vase. Um, because my hands are kind of fleshy on your palm, you, you don't really tend to get a, um, a nice solid grip at the bottom. So I'm just coming back in here and kind of squeezing the base back in and then bringing that clay up into the piece. But you notice that I'm just going really slow. I don't try to rush this, especially on these tall pieces here. I just take my time. So here I go back to fast speed. Um, and for these next few pulls, I just do a couple little thumb pulls, just trying to get this more of a cylindrical shape. And then I'm back to doing these finger pulls. Now, I, I typically stand up. I like to stand up when I do these tall vases because I feel it gives me a better, a better vantage point to look down at the vase. And also, um, I feel that I can pull my, uh, my fingers up just by kind of standing up. You'll notice that my whole torso raises. And the entire time, my, my right arm is touching my, my hip, my, my leg the entire time. And my legs are touching the side of the vase, so that every or side of the uh, side of the wheel, and everything is nice and smooth and centered. I'm not moving around too too much. I'm just trying to go a nice, smooth, committed pull all the way to the top. And you really do have to commit. If you're if you're hesitant in any way, or if you feel your hands moving in any way, I I just tell myself I'm just going to lock in and just go. So you'll see there that the camera just uh, moved a little bit, and it's because I had to stop because my camera battery died, which is absolutely killing me. I've got to get a new camera. Um, but I had to stop and go replace the batteries and come back in and it completely threw off my timing here. I was doing such a good pulse with this thing and sometimes I just go and you can see here, uh, I'm getting wobbly. It's driving me crazy. So I'm just trying to compress this clay back into a nice straight, smooth cylindrical shape, but I lost it. You know, you kind of get and definitely get into a zone where you're throwing these guys and to, to have to walk away, even for a couple minutes to do something different, it really throws you off. So um, I didn't get the height that I wanted here, so now I'm just taking my rib tool and kind of compressing the clay and just trying to straighten it back out. If you can hold that rib tool steady against clay, it'll really straighten out any wobbles you have here and just try to compress it back in. So I lost some height here. I probably could have gotten more if I could have just stayed with it, but it's all for the, the YouTube videos. I got to capture all this. So now I'm just working on compressing this neck back in and trying to get it down to a really small shape. I like when I had these little bottlenecks. So Again, before I do any of this, I'm making sure that I get all the water and slip out of the bottom of this because it won't be able to get out of it later on. And if you leave water and slip at the bottom of your pieces, as they dry, they can tend to crack, which is bad. So now I'm just trying to use my rib tool to kind of compress this into a nice little bottleneck here. Um, you know, I typically like this these kind of shapes. Sometimes I'll do some open neck stuff, but I like the way that this kind of works. So it it's only difficult when it comes time to glaze because you the only way you can get glaze in there is to is to pour it in so you have to have a lot of glaze to to work with so now i'm kind of all done with the shape that i want get my ruler out checking it nope it's not the two feet that i wanted but oh well what are you gonna do so this is kind of dried to uh almost leather hard and now it's time to trim now you can see i was kind of having to recenter that a little bit because um as you take tall pieces off the wheel sometimes if you lean them off to one way or the other then they'll become uncentered but i usually just kind of push mine back in the direction because the the base is still kind of elastic so It'll have a little bit of wobbleness to it that you can kind of adjust if need be. Using a big red metal rib to kind of smooth everything out, I want a nice smooth surface to work with. And then here I go with my chatter tool. So um, these chatter tools are just fantastic. If you if you don't know how to make one, if you go to, um, there's a YouTube uh, subscriber, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. I think it's 
Huin Shin. I, I don't. I can't pronounce his name. If you look up pottery videos, the guy does amazing stuff, and it's uh, it's fantastic. But he'll he has these videos on how to make these shatter tools, and they're fantastic. Um, and I use them all the time. Now, when it comes to these these little carve outs, there are people that have to measure it out, and I'm definitely one of those people. I should not just go and expect that I'll line up perfectly to the other side because it turns out that I don't. I got in between carve outs here, and I couldn't figure out what I was going to do, so I end up having to kind of adjust my design because. I didn't measure it out. I just decided to just go for it and assume that I would line up. So what I'm actually going to do here is, is make a big cutout that's going to uh, go down into my next level and just put, kind of make a little V. And this will end up being, the I guess, the front of the vase. This is what you look at first. So uh, now I can use that as like kind of the starting point for my next series of cutouts here. So um, my advice and uh, what I should do is follow my own advice is to, is to plan it out. Just to say, okay, this is what's going to happen. I do little like scribes and marks kind of show this is what's going to happen you know on this level and this level and then i just go back and cut everything out but you know you live and you learn and this turned out to be actually okay i didn't mind having the big one there so i've got more room here so i thought i'll do a a, a third level so you'll see that i'll spin this around and i'll just use the edge of my exacto blade to draw a little guideline for the top and bottom to show here's how tall everything's going to be because i like when it lines all up perfectly so i decided to do a couple little rectangles making very careful that i don't let the pieces fall inside the vase. I want them to stay outside. If they fall inside, I'll never get them back out. So making sure that I pull these guys out as they go along. And now it's just some triangles in between the rectangles to just kind of fill that space up. So I love that you can see through these that they're, you know, they look really solid, but they're actually, they, they're pretty delicate that you can see all the way through. The negative space makes for a really cool design. So just adding a little bit of chatter tool on the bottom here, putting some little uh, guidelines to show that where the texture starts and stops. And then smoothing it out with the sponge so that you can get rid of some of those uh, sharp, heavy lines going in both directions and just smoothing it all out. So here's the finished result. Nice, big, tall, pierced base. Lots of negative space. And not quite 24 inches, but pretty tall regardless. So thanks for watching. Come back and watch some more.